Now it's time for Cannabis Talk 101 with Blue, Joe Grande, and Mark and Craig Wasserman, the Pot Brothers-in-Law. Uh, Evan, you mentioned the opioids, you know, you mentioned the injuries, the pain that you went through. Walk us through, you know, some of these injuries and what the NFL was offering you, giving you for that. I mean, even in college, but when did these injuries start and what did you start taking before you realized cannabis was the solution? Um, man, I took it all. Uh, I took everything I could. Joe, I think you're at that party. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Joe was there too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, a, I'm, a, t- I'm an all guy too. Like, whatever, let's do it. Yeah, I mean, I was a, I was in the full-blown warrior mindset. You know, whatever I had to do to play on Sundays to get out there to do what I love to do, um, whether that meant wreaking complete havoc on my body or not, um, I, I mean, the major injuries I suffered along with just all the, the bumps and bruises and the nicks and all the just the inevitable aspects of the grind that is playing in the NFL. You know, I dislocated my shoulder twice in one game oh. playing against the Kansas City oh. Chiefs. Um, and in that, during that time, I was playing with a herniated disc and sciatic nerve damage going down my right foot. Is that all? Down to my right foot. Yeah. <laughs> and just playing uh, uh, right guard. <laughs> just pushing through it. Yeah, so it was, uh, the Chiefs, that was, it was a pretty epic story, which I'll share with you. So it was my second year. I'd come out of my rookie year on top of the world. I mean, I was on the all-rookie team. I had had a, a stellar season, really setting myself up for the career that I had always envisioned for myself. Um, during OTAs or at the end of OTAs, we were in, uh, weight training. It was like three weeks before training camp started and we were doing these squats, these air squats on this thing called a Kaiser machine. And it's like, you load this thing up with thousands of pounds of air pressure and we're doing these explosive squat movements. And I got in there, and I was kind of fucking around. Like, I had done a set, did it, came out. I was kind of fucking around, like, talking to one of my teammates, laughing about something. I got in, and the coach would would give us a cue. He'd say, hit, and we'd drop down and explode up. And on this, on this one rep where I got back in there, he said, hit, and I dropped down. And I felt this, like, tube of toothpaste squirt into my right butt cheek. Oh! And Great. I came out, and I didn't know what had happened. Uh, I felt like somebody had ripped my torso off my body and put me back backwards. Mm. And I didn't know if I had torn my glute or if I had torn my hamstring. Or Or shit your pants, maybe? Like one of the (laughs) other, right? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So I check. I go. After that, we go right outside and do sprints. And we're running sprints, and I'm trying to beat everybody, and I'm really pissed off because I've had this great off season, and now I feel like my like I can't even move. And we're running sprints, I tear my hamstring. Then come into the training room, and they can't really figure out what's going on. They do these tests, and then they do this one where I have a straight leg. I'm lying down on my back, keep my leg straight, and they raise my leg, and I can't get it like four inches up. And then they go, oh, you herniated your disc. And there was just this energy shift, and um, it really became the bane of my football career from there on out. I spent the next three weeks just in agony preparing for – my second training camp in the NFL. And uh, it started this long process of really the deconstruction of my body. And um, so I managed that. Every morning I would be up at the facility at 5 o'clock in the morning doing treatment, getting in the hot and the cold tub, getting massages, getting the, the ice and the stem and all these different things, these machines that they have. And uh, just doing everything I can to manage it, doing a lot of core work, stretching, all this stuff. Um, Finally, it's like week seven or eight, and we're playing the Kansas City Chiefs. I've been managing this with all of those protocols, like I said, also with, you know, handfuls of Adderall and Vicodin. Right. And get into this Kansas City Chiefs game. It's about... We're right before the end of the second quarter. I'm playing. I'm starting at right tackle. 
it's a it's an outside zone play and against that three four defense i'm like pushing through up through the outside shoulder of that defensive end working up to the linebacker i push through the defensive end get up to the linebacker this pile of bodies just comes and like takes out my legs uh. and i land on my shoulder at a right angle and something just pops but I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't feel anything. I was on Toradol, I was on Ad- Adderall, I was on Vicodin. You were a fucking tank up. killer. Go get him. Just go. <laughs> I get up and I, I can't move my arm and I'm like, oh shit, my shoulder's out of the socket. So I pop it back into the socket. I just like rolled it back in, finish the drive, we score a touchdown. I come onto the sidelines, I'm yelling at our athletic trainer. Say, hey man, I just dislocated my shoulder. I need a shoulder harness because we're about to go out there for a two-minute drill. And he's looking at me like, what? And I'm like, hurry the fuck up, dude. We're about to be back on the <laughs> yeah, field. You yeah. need to Get, go manage right me up, hook me up, whatever. Yeah, and so he runs. We flip, throw off my shoulder pads, throw this shoulder harness around me, get my shoulder pads back on. It's like a NASCAR tire change. <laughs> and as soon as I'm done, I'm like running off onto the field for a two-minute drill. Two plays into two-minute drill, I'm pass, pro, I'm pass protecting against Mike Vrabel. I go to punch with my right arm. He swipes it. It comes out of the socket again. <laughs> Jesus. And I, this time I can't get it in because the harness is of now holding Of course, you're strapped. You're strapped. Yeah. So I'm just, I start running off the field, tapping the top of my helmet. My backup comes running in. It takes... Three team doctors, about five minutes to get my shoulder back into the socket. Jesus. And they say, Ed, why don't you, we're going to take you in. We're going to get you some meds. We're going to just, let's take a shower and get out of your Call, call it a day. Yeah, yeah you're take done for right. a day. Yeah. You know, in that whole time, I'm thinking to myself, I'll be ready for Dallas next week. Fuck. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know? And uh, after the game. I'll be I mean, ready for like, Dallas next week. That's great. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, that was my mentality. And after the game, for the first time ever in my career, our team doctor said, man, I, I can't let you play again. I can't let you play again this year. We're going to put you on injury reserve. Wow. We need to have surgery as soon as possible. And I just burst into tears. You sure, know? Yeah. It, was, it was the first time ever in my life that I wasn't going to be able to physically play. Um and, you know, that started a very deep life experience of what opiates are and what they do to me in particular. Uh, I went down to Alabama. This guy, Dr. Andrews, who's kind of the world-renowned orthopedic guy. He's done everybody's shoulders. He did a beautiful job reconstructing my shoulder. It's probably better than my left at this point. Huh. No, they look equally good. Day. Janae and I did a vote. <laughs> <laughs> um, I appreciate that. Um, so, but, you know, part of that protocol is you get this month prescription of, that, of Vicodin. And I started taking this stuff because that's what the doctor said. And it's like, oh, these are painkillers. And I'm in a lot of pain. And this should this is given me given to me by this doctor, so I'm going to take it because it'll help me. Because be it's to... right, right. This right. is the right thing to do. Yeah, exactly. And very quickly, you know, I was in a very vulnerable state. My mom went with me down to Alabama. I couldn't oh. get dressed on my own. Couldn't fucking do really anything. And uh, I remember so vividly, like right away, I had this experience. I would take these pills. 30 minutes later, my mom would be helping me tie my shoes, and I'd snap at her. You know, I'd just oh, be like... Oh, so you find yourself reacting, almost like a roid rage, but a pill rage. Exactly, and I would have this... And it happened every time. I would have this low... I would have this rage just simmering below the surface of every interaction I was having, and I would go, whoa, man, this isn't me, you know? Um, and... That would continue for the next, 
you know, a few months. Would your mom call uh, you on it as well? Did she like, what the fuck yeah, are like, you doing? Like family members. I mean, at first, Evan, I'm your no. mother. Shut your mouth. I brought you into this world. <laughs> yeah. Don't make me take you out. I don't care if you're in the NFL. I'll smack your big ass in a heartbeat. You big motherfucker. I mean, it's, it's, she, uh, I mean, my mom used to, uh, she, my mom's 5'2", and I was bigger than her when I was eight years Just old. a little. When I was eight? So, yeah. uh, Literally. You know, it was just such a traumatic experience for everyone involved, you know, the whole football experience. And that, you know, I think it was just so out of character because I'm such a loving Zen individual that it was, you know, people around me. I was a I was a king of my domain. You know, every every interaction I had was as Eb is this professional athlete. We need to do whatever is necessary to keep Eb, you know, at a level where he feels good so that he can go perform. Because I'm taking care of everybody and. Um, you know, but eventually those conversations didn't really happen until much later. You know, a lot of the healing has come since leaving the NFL. Sure. You know, that the NFL, my football career from that point really was a descent into some into some dark times. But to get um, to the bright ones, you got to go through the dark ones. Right. I mean, it's part of life and learning. Yeah. And now Absolutely. you can be an advocate that speaks on it and goes, you guys, I've been down Absolutely. this dark trail. It took me to this roid raging, pill raging, family fucking darkening. I mean, you know, <laughs> when you snap against your own mother and they're like, Eb, this isn't how you were raised. It's not how you act. And yeah. this is not who your character is. Was it hard in a, another crying breakdown moment when you realize, fuck, this isn't who I am. Look at you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's been a lot of tears shed, Joe. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny, Eb, as you say that, as, as what you were describing, to be honest with you, reminds me of my drug addiction and my abusive behaviors back in the days, just by the tone that you were using of when your mother said, and you're describing that, that was when, when I had my turnaround, you know what I mean? Like, I got sober at the age of 26 because I, too, was an asshole. I, I just became too much, you know what yeah. I mean? I'm just doing too yeah. many drugs, I'm doing too much, so that's what I heard from you when I was hearing between the lines, that's what I was like, when you found that... It had to be another emotional breakthrough. Absolutely, man. Had to hit the rock bottom. Yeah. You know? I think, you know, we all at some point in our lives hit rock bottom in one way or another. And that's just a, another way to say, you know, the karmic weight of our actions has become too heavy for us to bear anymore. And it's like, this isn't working. The yeah. way we're living our life is not working anymore. And there has to be another way.